Hello and welcome to our viewers on cruxinvestor.com and also to our listeners on Cruxcast, our new podcast series. We're here at the one-to-one -one conference in London and we're joined today by Igor Gonzalez, he's the president and CEO of Sierra Metals. Hello Igor, how are Hello, you? Hello Matthew, how are you today? Fantastic, L lovely to have you here in London. Yes, it is. It now, is I always start off and I get people to do just a two, three minute helicopter view of the, uh, the business. Okay, uh, Sierra Metals is a polymetallic producer mm -hmm. that has operations in, in two very well-established mining jurisdictions, mm -hmm. uh, which are uh, Mexico and Peru. Mm -hmm. We have one, our largest mine in, in Peru, which produces three types of concentrates, mm -hmm. uh, lead, uh, copper, and zinc concentrates. It's the Yauricocha mine, located at 4,700 meters above sea level. Then we have two other mines in, in, uh, in Mexico. One is the Bolivar mine in the state of Chihuahua. Mm -hmm. uh, Bolivar is uh, currently at around 3,600 tons per day uh, in, in throughput. And then we have the smaller mine, which is the Cusi mine, which uh, uh, is a silver mine essentially, and now running uh, around 1,200 tons per day. Okay, fantastic. And, and give us a sort of sense of the size of the business, the scale of the business. Well, um, we, we, we will generate uh, an EBITDA this, this year in, in the order of uh, 90 to $100 million. Mm -hmm. uh, our revenue is uh, in, in excess of $250 million. And uh, we, our debt is uh, uh, about, a uh, total debt, about $65 million. And, uh, and so we generate positive cash flow and we finance all of our uh, capital requirements uh, uh, with uh, our own cash flow. Right, thank you very much for that. Yes. Okay, so you're obviously here in London yes. at the one-to-one -one conference. Yes. Um, why are you here? Well, we, we want to promote our, our company. We, we think that uh, we're a growth story. We're a success story in terms of uh, exploration results uh, growing our reserves and resources and, uh, and putting those uh, resources and reserves into operation. We've been growing our, our throughput steadily in the last uh, three years. And, and so we, we want to continue to do that. We, this year is uh, the, the largest investment for us in terms of our capital requirements. We will invest in the neighborhood of $83 million just to okay. grow our operations in both in Mexico and Peru. And that's self-funded? It's self-funded, right. but all funded by, uh, from our cash flow. We think that's a, a very attractive story for any investor because uh, we're, um, we have a solid base from which we're growing our business, which is we're, we're growing our, our resources and reserves, and then we're growing our our uh, production uh, plants, and, and, and therefore our, our um, unit costs will drop as, as a result of that, and our, our um, um, investors will benefit from, from that uh, uh, lower, lower cost production. Okay, so that's interesting. So you're, you're listed on the TSX, obviously. We are listed in the TSX and in the New York Stock Exchange. New York Stock yeah. Exchange, okay. So those markets at the moment seem quite illiquid. And a lot of companies are coming to London, to other parts of Hong Kong, other parts of the world, looking for new access to new investors. Um, what, are, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to get better liquidity because you're unhappy with perhaps the market cap now? I mean, what, what's the goal for yes, you? We, we would like to have a better liquidity. Uh, our liquidity hasn't been all, all that great. Uh, as we moved from Toronto to New York, uh, um, uh, we improved our liquidity. However, we're, we're also looking for other other areas uh, where London could be one of them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, but one of the issues we we face is that we have uh, a major shareholder that ha holds 52% of the company, and uh, and he has that 52% divided in, into two uh, sub uh, funds. This is this New York fund. Uh, yeah, right. uh, our fund, mm -hmm. and uh, and but one of the funds is due now, and and so he he will have to deal with that that fund uh, e eventually, and and that will bring 
a lot of liquidity to to our to our stock into, into uh, niche shares into the market. Yes. Not niche, sorry, shares into the market. Market. Yeah. And so, well, who are the other uh, major shareholders at the moment? BlackRock. Yep. And Ingalls and Schneider. That's right. Evie yeah. e e e e Hamber yeah. over here. Evie e e Hamber. Right. Okay. So, are you? Those are quite a bit of your shares are taken up with major institutional money. Are you looking to drive interest from the retail market, high net worth, family office type? Yes. Right. Yes, that's that's our target because we we think there's a lot a lot to gain. Right. From uh, our story and our, our ability to generate cash and 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 revenue and uh, and uh, earnings per share. Right. So you, again, I think like a lot of people, you'd say you're undervalued. And if you didn't, you wouldn't be doing your job. That's so right. um, <laughs> l let's let's take that as as read. What is the me the growth message? What's the what's the growth actually going to be delivered by for these shareholders? You know, your your share price is what it is today. You are um, funding yourselves, self funding. Yes. You, you're growing. There's a yes. big growth story. People look yeah. at your uh, presentation, which I encourage yes. them to do on your website. Yeah. There's a big growth story there. You've got three quite good assets. Yeah. Um, where's the upside going to come for a new in from for new investors? I think the the upside for new investors is is, is based on our, our growth. Our our growth is quite steady. Mm -hmm. And 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 the other area so where we bring a lot of value to our investors is the way we spend our capital. Mm. Uh, our capital spend is is quite uh, um, with very high ROIs, and and the reason we do that is because we do small increments in, in capacity to our plants, and, and we use local talent, local engineering firms, construction and and labor, mm. and therefore we're very efficient in the use of capital, because we're in two well-known mining jurisdictions. We don't need to go outside of, of Mexico or Peru to yeah. find this the skill we need yeah. to grow, and that that makes that the capital we use it's it's quite uh, quite profitable in the sense that uh, we, we get a great return on, on our investment, uh, and uh, for for the expansion we do in, in in both Mexico and Peru. Okay, interesting. Yeah. So, in that case, your your ASIC is what it is. How are you going to drive that down if you're already very efficient? Is that something that you're well, trying to do? As we increase our throughput, you see then the, our, you see the our, our, our fixed costs, which are our operating yeah. costs, will, will start dropping right. down and our, our net cash flow will, right. will, will increase and so that, that will drive the, the earnings per share. Right, so it's going to be come from gr grades. Growth. Yeah, grades, grades, higher throughput. Higher basically. throughput. Yeah. Okay, so, so if we look back at 2018, what would you have done differently? I think we would have done the, the a, a similar story, but faster if okay. we, we could have. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Is that that's your big big learning from last year? Uh, yes, probably. So okay. yeah, and we were uh, we've been slowed down by permits, for example. Right. Uh, we would have uh, probably applied to permits much earlier than we have, mm -hmm. and that that that's a learning lesson from us. We we could have done this faster had we applied for permits, uh, especially in Peru. Peru. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a jurisdiction where there's a lot of bureaucracy in the in the in the permits. And had we applied earlier and and moved on the on those permits you, be faster, there. we would be. You'd be there today. Yes. Okay. So um, if I look at 2019, people always talk about catalysts and you know catalysts for growth and yes. so forth. But how do you balance running a company and mm -hmm. all the risks associated with that and driving shareholder value, a share price appreciation? I think uh, we, we we try to balance that by by trying to meet our, our targets in the, uh, being responsible in our in our in our spend. Mm. We we try to mm, apply the capital where we need it. We try to be very disciplined in our uh, production and our results, and we show that quarter over quarter. And, and by doing so, then we, we represent to a, a, any, any potential investor a, a solid story, a responsible company that, that will look after the interest of their shareholders mm -hmm. by, re, by respecting our budgeted numbers, by meeting our, our metal production, by meeting our costs, by meeting our capital requirements, uh, by, by respecting the, all the framework uh, that it's required to operate in, in, in the two countries we operate. I think that's how we, we show to our shareholders that we're a, a responsible investor and someone you can trust and someone you can, 
you can go there and 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 rely on what uh, what we're saying. No, we so deliver it, on, on what we say. Yeah, I think it's a very interesting story. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of slow, steady growth as opposed to telling people they're going yeah. to get multiple yeah. baggers. That's right. right. And, and, okay. and we uh, we have a track record. Yep. That it's very clearly uh, proven. We've been delivering our, on our on our commitments to the to the market uh, on a very steady steady pace. Yeah. Okay. And how are you going to manage these new investors coming in? How are you going to manage the stories to them that you that you're telling? I think I think uh, we're we're going to manage them by uh, um, continue our, our path of of delivering results, uh, continue our growth. In a in a more uh, dramatic way, if I mm -hmm. could use that word, because we we're looking at uh, larger expansions in the future, and and once we're we're in that uh, position, uh, then we can then look into uh, M and A's and, and and the like. In other words, a growth story altogether. Yeah. Right. Well, that, that's what I want to come on yeah. to. But but first, I want to talk about the market. Okay. Yeah. Now, you you're polymetallic, which basically means. You're in lots of lots of things. You're gold, silver, copper, lead, zinc. I think is that, right. that right? That's okay. Right. So you kind of spread the risk, but you've also quite exposed to the commodity market generally at the moment because it's it's pretty flat. Yes, it, it it is. It is, but at the same time, we're exposed to precious metals and we're exposed to base metals. Mm. And and when one does better than the other, then uh, we we have a natural. Uh, a natural hedge there right. by by producing five different metals. Uh, unfortunately, we 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 don't choose whether we we could not be a a, a, a polymetallic producer because that's the nature of our of mm. our resources. Mm. But uh, what we can do is uh, we can we can gauge our production according to the the needs of the market depending on the metal. I'll give you a a, a good example for Thank that. You. Two of our mines, the Yauricocha mine and the Bolivar mine, mm. are copper producers. Though we produce mm. copper concentrates, and if had the market had the price of copper would go up, we mm. would have the flexibility to to increase our throughput in in, in terms of copper, for right. example, and and likewise in in, in zinc or, or 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 in lead. So we we have some flexibility in our production to to try to uh, meet the, the the needs of the current uh, metal market or, or the metal price. For example, there is a, a, a trend that uh, zinc and silver will might go up uh, in the rest of the year. Then we can right. move into those directions right. if, if we need to. Yeah. Right, but um, again, you've got to be able to produce those efficiently. Yes. So yes. how does a polymetallic company operate? How the, do you the polymetallic, uh, what happens in our Yari Kocha mine, the truly metallic, polymetallic, mm. uh, is that we have three mines in, in one. Mm. We have uh, one mine that's truly metallic, has all the, all the metals in it. The other sub-mine of, of Yauricocha has essentially copper, mm. uh, and then we have lead and zinc on the, on the other one. So we can, we can uh, in, in, a, in our mine plan, we can then gauge the, according to our needs and, and, and put more emphasis in one versus the other. Right. Uh, without, of, of course, uh, uh, stepping out of the boundaries of our uh, efficient cost structure. Right. So you, yeah. you're spending a lot of time working on efficiency. Yes. And therefore yes. margins. We, we are, for example, putting a lot of emphasis in our planning uh, uh, um, team. We have incorporated in our team very senior planners now. We have a, a, a senior planning team in our corporate office that provides services to all three mines. So the, 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 the mines do the, the short-term plan and the, the senior team does the long-range planning, trying to, to obtain value from the different attributes that each mine has. You mentioned the word strategy a few minutes ago, yeah. and, and part of that strategy is M&A or M&A potential. So you're, you're running three assets at the moment. You're op, you know, optimizing those continually. You've got a planning team working on that. How do you go about identifying new assets? A lot of competition and not a lot of good assets. Yes, we, we usually get assets and uh, this, uh, we have a, 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 this planning team that will go and evaluate these assets and compare to our assets. Mm. And, uh, and, um, and of course, uh, estimate the, the potential uh, of growth, uh, 
operating costs, uh, location, geography, uh, infrastructure, etc. And based on that, we'll we'll say yes or no to a, to a, any any uh, potential possibility of of, of an M and A. Now, we would like to stay in 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 a jurisdiction that we know mm -hmm. where, where we're comfortable. And and uh, however, we we don't discard other other uh, jurisdictions just just uh, because of their ge geography, but. Uh, we we are quite comfortable where we're operating. Yeah, well, I think I think that's smart. Yeah, very 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 smart. Yeah. Okay, so you running a company is about managing risk every day. There's always something that can go wrong, right? Yes. Okay. Are you frustrated by the market because that's another layer of risk which yes. you're having to deal with? I, I am uh, in the so sense what, that what we gonna... cannot we cannot manage the market. We cannot uh, manage the prices. We don't have control of the prices, mm -hmm. but we do have con what do we have? Uh, we have control is in our own uh, cost structure, mm -hmm. our operating costs, our capital efficiency, yeah. our our, uh, our ability to deliver our, our production in, into the market. So that, that's what we, we have the control, and that's where we have to work in. We don't have to worry so much about you know, copper price because we don't yeah. dictate the copper price, yeah. but we have to be as efficient as possible in our, in our copper output uh, per unit cost. And, yeah. and you think compared to your peers, you're yes, achieving Yes, we, we, are, we are competitive, yes. Okay, yes. so big question to finish with. Sure. Is mining still a relevant investment class? The, the world is, is going to continue to grow. Mm. There is many, many countries that still have, have not fully developed. And those countries will demand metals mm. for the long run. And you've got the right metals. And we have the right metals. We have the industrial metals and we have the precious metals. So uh, as far as the, 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 grow, the, the world grows, we, we have, uh, I think, in mining uh, a reliable industry that can sustain that growth for for both the industry and and um, and the humanity. Yeah? What do you think the mining industry, or even your company, needs to do better to explain to new investors coming into uh, the this, this space with a bit some spare cash? What do they need to do? Mining has has been uh, seen as a as an industry that uh, is is not friendly to the environment. What I can say to new investors is that uh, mining can coexist with environment. Uh, as a matter of fact, we do that. We there, there are farming areas right right beside our, our uh, mining operations mm -hmm. today. With the available technology, you can you can work uh, hand in hand with the uh, farming, hand in hand with uh, uh, animal raising, ha hand in hand with other industries. Give you a, a, a prime example. Mm. All of the water that we um, that leaves our, our properties in, in Peru, for example, are all treated to to water quality standards. Mm -hmm. So the the farms or the the users down the road cannot complain, and we're we're monitored by uh, by third parties, by the authorities. We we get uh, audited and everything else. So I think the technology has made mining a much more friendlier industry than it was in the past. Yes, we do move earth from one place to the other, mm -hmm. but uh, underground mines are, are friendlier than open pit mines, for example, in that sense. But nevertheless, uh, all the uh, um, waste rock facilities now are monitored, they have drainage, they have yep. water contention, they yep. have water, uh, and they have um, canals that uh, divert all rainwater from entering into mm. those facilities, etc. So the, the technology is there. They ha we have continuous monitoring mm -hmm. of, our, of all of our uh, the, um, effluents, including the, the camp effluents and everything. They all have to be treated. Okay, so. I think that's a great point to have. Igor yeah. Gonzalez, thank you very much thank for coming so and much, seeing yeah. us. Thank you very much for watching our video. We do aim to give you informed and intelligent information with which to make your investment decisions. So if you liked what you just saw, please give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more insightful, in-depth, honest and unbiased interviews, 
then please click the subscribe button. So thanks again for watching and we look forward to seeing you again soon.